Hi, my name is Greg Blessing. I'm a guide with Anglers Covey. I've been guiding for him for over three decades. Doesn't mean I know much. Um, everything is learning, learning, learning. So today we're talking about the PMD, which is a uh, yellow colored mayfly, kind of a dark olive yellow as far as the nymph. Um, ranges in size from 16 to 20. Um, usually comes off somewhere in the 52 to 55 degree range in the water temperature. Um, happens in June most of the time. Uh, very prevalent for three, four weeks and uh, fish really key on them. We, have, we carry these sayings in the shop and uh, they're a good way to tell what's in the river as well as what's going on right at the moment. To tell what's going on right at the moment, you are only going to put it in the top column of the water to see if, as far as a hatching or a dry fly or anything like that that's coming off any kind of a, an adult that's hatching. Um, to, to find out what's in the river, you can get up above this stuff and stick your thing down here. Shuffle your feet a little bit. You can pick up some different stuff that'll come up in there. I'm not sure how much we'll get here because we're in a pretty high water and we're not really where the water usually is. So, well, there's one right there though. And here we have a PMD right here, PMD nymph. Um, also another one right up here. And look at the wing case. Look how developed it is. That's gonna tell you, man, that, that sucker's real close to hatching. He's real close to becoming an adult and, and trying to escape those trout as he jumps up through this water to get out of here. Anyway, that can tell you just um, what a saying can do for you. And look where we were standing. And this is water that usually doesn't have, or areas of water that there's usually no water. And yet there's still bugs here. So that tells you they'll move over. And that's why the trout are over here. Yep, they can sit over here and any kind of disturbance that's going on up the river is going to kick up food for you. And then it's just a matter of you getting it in front of a fish in time to eat it, right? So, yeah, I, I think a saying is a very good thing to use. So, you know, in high water, like we have right now in this spring, we've had a lot of rain and, and some good snow melt. Uh, the fish aren't going to be where you traditionally catch them in the low water conditions. They're going to get out of there. They don't want to have all that pressure on them. They can come over here and sit right behind trees and bushes and everything else. So sometimes it makes it a little difficult to get to them. But normally right here, they would be right here in this little seam right here where any kind of a break in the river that they can sit there and, and eat food without using up too much energy. Uh, even though this is a little bigger mayfly than what they're used to, they still still isn't a big bunch of food. So, you know, they're gonna eat as much as they can without using the energy. So it's up to us to put it in front of the fish. And that means that you not only have to put it in front of the fish, but you have to put it there repeatedly times so that you can hopefully in those 30 casts that you might get once or twice that you're in his two inch window at the time he wants to eat. All right, because they all have their own set up how they eat. They eat and they'll come back, reset up. And this is something that, that people don't understand is, is uh, these fish have a, a hierarchy in how they eat. And uh, it's up to you to kind of put that in front of them when they're ready to eat it, which, you know, I see too many people cast out there, make three casts in one spot and leave to another spot. Well, that's not really fishing to the fish. I mean, you're, you might get lucky and actually get one that's ready to eat in your timing, but that's not how it normally works. Again, back out there, in this higher water, I'm gonna try to be in pretty dang tight, okay? Because they don't wanna be out in this real high water, although sometimes they'll get out there. If you can put it right on that little seam where it's the high water and the little slower water, then they're gonna hang right there where they can actually keep their heads in the slow water, their heads just about in the little bit of faster water scene and eat without using up a bunch of energy. So it's kind of us, up to us to find a spot where we can do that. And, and uh, that's basically what you need to do. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. <laughs> Well, 
as you can see I have I have different emergers a lot of emergers in here foam backs here's a really old pattern guys that people don't ever use anymore and it's called a floating nymph but it's really good for PMDs because that's what it is baby it's just a uh, pheasant tail with a hackle on top and you just build a little ball on top of it and, and parachute your hackle around it um, otherwise I also like ones with biots I mean you know fish see a lot of a lot of patterns okay so you know you've got to have something different a lot of times uh, bubble back it's a good pattern there um, split back uh, wand split back is a great a great PMD nymph um, but anything I think I really think size and silhouette is the top two things guys so that's what you need to make deal with okay um, my emerger sometimes they have a little straws to, to make it look like the shuck that's on there um, otherwise if you can get them right when they're in the middle of the of the uh, hatch and they're exploding out of that wing thing this this guy here is a really good pattern that has a little wing case you tie it reversed it's a, a downy wonder nymph and uh, it's a great PMD pattern. It's been one of my go-to patterns for 25 years, probably. Um, do have a couple other, you know, semi-floaters. Most of my other stuff is actually in this box for PMDs. And then I also have my yellow sallies in here, which can also happen right then. This is a really great yellow sally pattern that I don't know if you can even find it anymore. You tie it with a mallard flank. It is really floats just right in the film baby so then we got some of course some spent wings of the of the pmds for later on i really like a parachute i think the parachute is probably my best pattern as far as being able to have clients see the freaking bug <laughs> which you know we all know is pretty huff we can go to um what the hell is that called I forget <clears throat> sparkle bun yeah, sparkle done but it's a it's a type of wing that comes uh, for comparadon yes uh, i like the comparadons because it actually lets the the butt sink a little bit um then if you've ever seen um quigley's quigley's uh nymph which is a uh, a stuck in the shuck type of nymph it it actually will right here is one right cheer this is a great pattern i've had fish turn and literally turn and come down four feet for it and i mean big browns which should know better <laughs> but they didn't right so that's a pretty good pattern i, I really like that one um, getting back to this other dry fly box of course a whole bunch of parachutes because they float good for people to see um i think a parachute pheasant tail is <laughs> as good as any pattern for a pmd um you know it's usually you're fishing in a little faster water and you can see it and they have to make a pretty quick decision on it so it's not too much but you know i'd recommend carrying a bunch of different sizes okay because every river you fish is not going to have the same size of freaking bug right it's all different every elevation you're at down here in pueblo bigger bugs up higher in the mountains smaller bugs because they don't grow as long right they have a shorter growing season so that, that's what you're going to get with sizes. I fish and guide all over the west and uh, up on the bighorn. It's about a size bigger up there for everything the same. It's a tail water just like this, um, which has made me be a pretty good guide as far as I know what's going on because it's the same. Uh, same down on the San Juan River. You guys can get away with the same thing down there. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, picking up what's going on and learning as much as you can. And uh, you know what? It's just fishing, we can have a good time doing it. Okay, I'm going to take a minute to talk about the vest I'm wearing. It's a Sims Guide vest, has 24 pockets, which probably is a few pockets too many. Um, I like to fill every pocket. Anyway, I used to wear a pack all the time, and I think they're great, especially if you're rowing a boat or something all the time. Um, I just tended to keep it on one side, and so I kind of hurt my back after a while. I think this balances out better for me. Um, it's very accessible. You have a lot of different things that you can get. And if you're pretty knowledgeable as to where you put your stuff, you can find it easier again. I have, this is where my basic thermometer always is. I always recommend carrying a thermometer. 
Um, you know, I have different things attached here. I have my tweezers on one side, my hemos on the other to crimp the barbs, right? Um, a little thing for tippet trash put in there. Um, I have too much of this stuff on my vest right now. I need to clean it off and put it in a box and re see if it's worth keeping. Um, as you can see, I, I keep the stuff that I'm using pretty prevalent, like caddis right now. I keep those pretty handy so that I can get to them really easy. Um, same on this side. This guy has still a bunch of midge stuff that that we're still using because they eat midges 365. I mean, it's always in the water, so they're always available. Um, anything that I'm going to use more, I'm going to keep right there. And these two outside pockets, same thing. I keep the stuff that I can get to and use pretty easy. Um, stuff inside, it's kind of stashed away. I have a couple extra little boxes like the Purple Haze box that I just keep those in there so I know where they are. Um, then I have glue, different things in there. Um, here I have, oh, what do we have here? Looks like we've got a bunch of yeah, nymphs for this time of year for golden stones and even yellow sallies, um, which are all starting to get pretty prevalent. This pocket where I carry my weight, because guess what? I can get to them really easy, right? Um, I really like the fanny pack I have, and I had several Sims uh, Pro fanny packs. I like them, the ones with a double zipper that you can open up, um, easy to get into the stuff. And I still use that when I'm up in, in Montana guiding out of my boat. I don't like the vest on because uh, hitting the rows, row, uh, your oars all the time beats you kind of beat yourself up. Um, stuff inside here, like on your inside pockets, I carry strike indicators. Um, diff just different things that you're going to use throughout the year. I could actually probably clean some of that out because I'm not using that now. Um, on the other side, same thing. Here's a bottle of caddis, right? But um, yeah, it's a whole bunch of different dries. You can see how well organized I am. <laughs> um, and, and, and here's another thing, some more caddis. Uh, some with bead heads for sinking like a an emerging caddis has a bead that you can drop below the other stuff. There, there also is some uh, egg laying caddis for in the evening time, you know, it's called a hot butt. It has a little egg sack on the back, um, which can be awesome and nobody ever fishes it because hardly anybody fishes in the evening anymore. Um, other than that, yeah, it carries a lot, guys. I mean, there's double pockets in here. I got so many freaking flies, I don't know what to do with all of them. So there you have it. Speaking of Okay, guys, that's it for the bug of the month. Um, remember, if you have any uh, comments on it or any questions, leave it down below. There's a place for you to put that. Uh, make sure you check in next month for our Yellow Sally, and um, we'll see you on the river.